Daily Hope Time. My name is Joel Parker. This is Ephesians chapter 2, one of my favorites, and here's why. Because it gives a picture of who I am, of who God is, and what God ultimately wants to do with my life. Check it out. This passage starts off very unhopeful. Here's why. Paul's talking to the church, and he gives a picture of what the church looks like apart from Jesus Christ. Check this out. He says, And you were dead in your trespasses and your sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, that's Satan here. And he says, And the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were a nature of children of wrath, even as the rest. It's not very hopeful. That gives a picture, again, of who we are apart from Christ Jesus. But the two best words you'll ever hear in Scripture, right here, verse 4. But God. You see, God is not willing to prescribe to that narrative. He wants to do something new and intervene in that narrative. It says that he being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were verses one through three, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ. It continues. It says, and he raised us up with him and seated us in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So here's my question. Why would God do that? Why, if my reality apart from Jesus is that I live according to all the gross, atrocious sin that's happening in this world, why would he intervene and interject in my life in order to redeem it and place me and grab me from the bowels of hell and place me in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Verse 7 answers that question, I think. Check this out. So that... He does this so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So he reaches in, he rescues us from the bowels of hell, places us in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus in order to demonstrate the goodness of God to this generation. He's wanting to show off and he wants to show off through you and through me. And see, that's a pretty powerful invitation today that we might be the demonstration of just how good God is. Are you up for that? I think I am. Verse 8 gives a picture of what salvation really is. For by grace you've been saved. All of God's action towards us. Through faith, and it's not of yourself, it's a gift of God. No one can boast about it. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So he tells it how it is. Salvation is by God. It's through faith. Our response, faith, according to the Bible, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So it's merely believing on the work that Christ accomplished on the cross. And this is this, that we're his workmanship. What does that mean? It's, well, there's work to be done. You see, this world is still broken. This world still hurt. There's, there's pain everywhere we look. There's pain in our own lives. And so are we willing to participate with God in that work today? Because it says that we are his workmanship, created by God, and that work continues. It wasn't a creation and done thing. Creation is still happening. It's still moving. And he's wanting us to participate in building and creating his kingdom. You see, the last half of this chapter is much like the first half. It says, remember, uh, therefore, remember you formerly, the Gentiles, were called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision. So he's saying like the religious, the non-religious, remember what camp you were in. Verse 13, there's another, but now you are in Christ. You were formerly far off, but you have been brought near. Isn't that a cool in, like reminder today that you have been brought near? You are no longer on the outside looking in. You're a participant of the family of God. So then, verse 19 says, So then you are no longer strangers or aliens, but now are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. So welcome to the family, or be reminded today that you're in the family. What an incredible thing. And the the cool thing is this too. It's not this like exclusionary party. No, see the mission of God is to seek and to save that which is lost. There's a lot of work to be done and God's doing it. He's faithful to do it and he's invited us to participate in that. So remember your story. Remember my story. Remember our narrative, how who we are apart from Jesus Christ, who we are with Jesus Christ and who we are now as family and 
what an incredible, incredible reality that is for you and me. So I hope that's hopeful for you today. It's been hopeful for me. I hope you guys have a great day.